Hey, welcome to a very speedy Tiki Technical Tuesday. Today we're gonna to be doing some studio upgrades and the main thing we want to upgrade today is this. It is the motor mount for my slip table mixer. The slip table has this electric mixer that agitates the slip and gets it ready to go. Watch the previous episodes on making slip. I'll put the graphics here um, to find out what I'm talking about. Uh, it works great, but over the years, it has developed some issues. Mainly, it's rusting, and I think it's really, really challenging. Every time I want to adjust the propeller height on the mixer, I've got to, like, wrestle it off of the wooden racks that it's attached to. Um, it kind of wears away at the wooden racks, and since it's corroding, all of that corrosion is falling into the slip, which is definitely not what I want. So, what are we going to do about it? I think we're going to stick it onto the wall. I have devised what I think will be a easy to adjust, well, easy to service mounting system, and we're gonna cut it out of some plywood. <laughs> like all good ideas, this one begins in the sketchbook. I carefully measured the existing motor and its mounting points and devised a way that I could stick this thing onto the wall. I knew that I could make this quickly with just the table saw, but I thought it was a perfect time to use the Shaper Origin, my crazy handheld CNC router from the future. Once I had these plans, I jumped onto the computer and laid it out in scale in Adobe Illustrator, uh, devising all the parts that would be needed to cut and assemble the planned mount. I cut a bunch of plywood pieces roughly the size that I would need for the parts, and I set up my shaper station. So the shaper, uh, it takes a little bit of time to set up this tool, um, and it involves these crazy domino stickers. You're going to see me sticking like a whole bunch of these down. And then once you got those down, then you want to affix the piece that you want to cut underneath there. I'm using this double-sided tape. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the, the tedious setup, but once that is done, you are ready to rock. Again, I'm going to say, yes, I could do this with a table saw, but there is something magical about the extreme precision you can get using a CNC router like this. It's, uh, it's really just magic. So what is the deal with all these little dominoes? Well, the Shaper is a weird, fancy space age tool that actually has a pair of eyeballs up here. And I mean a pair because it actually sees in three dimensions, just like we do with binocular vision. And it's looking at all these dominoes on the workspace as it moves around. The reason it does this, uh, the, the creators of this tool use the term that I love. They say it's like stellar navigation, which being from Hawaii and thinking of the ancient Polynesians using the stars to navigate, I think is a beautiful thing. This looks at all of these dominoes and tracks exactly where they are and is because it knows that these, these dominoes are never going to move. So it knows based on the position of these dominoes in the camera exactly where it is at all times. It's a super cool, amazing concept. And um, as long as you get these dominoes down well on your workspace and they never move, this will cut perfectly every time. And when it doesn't cut perfectly, it's usually my fault because I'm still learning how to use it. The best way to explain the shaper is to just see it in action. It is like playing a video game and the end of the game you win a perfectly cut piece of wood. So I am trying to keep that tiny little white dot inside of the blue circle. As long as I move the router around and keep that white dot inside of the blue circle, the actual cutting bit will perfectly cut the design that I have downloaded into the shaper. It's just crazy how accurate this tool is. I can control depth and the tool knows how large the router bit is that I'm using at any given time. When cutting thick material like this three quarter inch plywood, you do have to do it in multiple passes. The bit can only cut about a quarter inch deep at a time. So it takes a while, but it is extremely accurate. Okay, so I am realizing in hindsight um, I probably should have measured the actual thickness of this three-quarter inch plywood because, as I'm sure all you woodworkers out there know, it's not exactly three-quarter inches. Um, and that might be a big deal when it comes time to uh, lock in all these little tabs that I've made um, because it's just a hair under three-quarter. So they might wiggle just a bit, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal because 
a lot of the tabs kind of interlock into sideways. It's complicated. I'm, I'm just hoping, I'm hoping it won't matter that much. That's my hope. Huh, slowly ma making my way through the stack. It's a lot of parts. This is where you see the power of that double-sided tape. Once I finish a piece, I can just pull off that piece of plywood, stick a new one down, download a new part to cut, and just have at it. Well, here we are at the time of difficult decisions for the self-employed. It's Friday afternoon, and I still have, man, I don't know, I still have a lot of parts to cut. There's so many parts for this little thing. Did I make it too complicated? Maybe, but I'm having fun. Unfortunately, like I said, it's Friday and I've got to make slip. I was supposed to make slip today, but I really want to get this done before I have to make slip. So I was like, well, maybe I'll make slip on Saturday. I'll finish this on Friday, but it's not done. So now my big dilemma is, do I work on Saturday, continuing to build this so that I can finish it, hopefully it works, and then I can make slip after. So that means pretty much all day Saturday I'm working. Or do I just get back to this next week and just make slip on Saturday? <sighs> if you, like me, are self-employed, you'll understand that weekends are rare and often they are just spent working. <sighs> It's Saturday, and we are going to finish this thing. This overhead shot gives you a great view of the shaper looking at the domino tools. You can see the spindle, the, the center part of the tool, adjusting itself as I move it around, correcting for my uneven motions and making smooth, perfect cuts as I play my little router video game. Okay, so we're on the mounting section of my planned uh, motor mount. This is These are the things that are going to stick to the wall, and I'm planning on making two of them. So that means that I have to cut each one of these sets of parts twice. Um, so thank goodness for the magic of editing. I'm not going to make you watch me do multiple sets of all these parts. Uh, we will just do a magical cut to standing and finishing. Whoosh! So the shaper does a great job at cutting smooth parts, but I want to make these things even smoother. So I just hit everything quickly with the palm sander. And I even went the extra mile on the handle portion and rounded it off to make it very hand friendly because this thing is going to be heavy with the motor on it and I want it to be comfortable. <sighs> okay, it's the moment of truth. I'm going to try to stick all this stuff together. Now, it's a really tight fit, so tight that I'm worried that some of these things, once I get them together, I'll never get them apart again. So I have to like decide now, how are we gonna really lock this stuff together? Is it gonna be glue? Is it gonna be nails? Is it gonna be screws? I don't know. I think that I'm going to figure it out as I go along. I'm going to see how snug the parts are. I might put a dab of wood glue in there. And then once I've got everything assembled with wood glue, uh, I might shoot a couple of brad nails in there just to really lock it all together. Let's see how it goes. So these parts fit together extremely tightly, tighter than I expected. And I'm using this as a dead blow hammer. It's a non-marring hammer that I can knock the wood together without actually damage the wood surface. And as you can see, it took a lot of pounding. Okay, that is a very snug fit. There's still a little bit of weird, weird wiggle room because like I said, the this plywood isn't exactly three quarters of an inch thick. so. The joints are very tight when it's a milled joint against a milled joint, um, but there's a little bit of wiggle room where it's a milled joint against um, kind of what was supposed to be the three quarter inch plywood. Overall though, it seems to really be snug. Uh, I do think I'll drive in a couple of nails just to seal the deal. Oh, and I might put a clamp on here before I put in nails. Um, but yeah, that's pretty darn good. Let's see how the other stuff goes together. These two boxes that we'll be mounting to the back wall of the studio went together even tighter than the motor mount did. Um, yeah, they took a lot of hammering to get them to seat correctly. And I am very happy with the overall fit. All right, moment of truth number two is to see if these things actually nest together. Oh man, I hope they fit. I hope they fit! Yeah! Ah, oh, that works.
works great. Woo! Okay. It's the little things. It's the little things. Oh my god. So glad it fits. Okay. I feel comfortable giving this a tight clamp and nailing everything together. I'm using my finishing nail gun here to shoot in an uh, inch and I think I'm inch and a three quarter uh, finishing nails and I'm putting them in at right angles to each other so that once these things are in, they are never coming apart. It is a very, very tight way to uh, bond these together with a good mechanical bond. Okay, I am so happy with the way these things are coming together. The final, final big alignment test is this little puka right here. Uh, you'll notice there's a matching puka over here. Where is it? Ooh. Oh, son of a gun. I put this together wrong. Just when things were going so well, you'll notice that the hole is down here and that it's up here. They're both supposed to be on the same side. God, did I do it right on the other box? Okay, this box is correct. This one is doomed. We'll have to fix this. Ah, nothing like finding that out after you've nailed everything. The good news is it's just a hole so we can just drill a second properly aligned hole. So it's not a big deal. Anyway, moving on. We're not gonna let mistakes bother us. These holes are here for a purpose and they are for these. Some super cool sci-fi looking uh, locking pins that should fit in here. Oh, it's such a tight fit. You know what? It's so tight that it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to drill that just a little bit bigger. Huh. Clearly, I didn't read the instructions correctly. So, there we go. I'm gonna, that solves the issue of the misaligned hole. We're gonna have to redrill all the holes. Let's get to it. Okay, back to the big alignment question. Oh. Yes. That is not going anywhere. I spent the extra dough to get the locking pins that have a safety lanyard on them because I was terrified I would, within a week of using this, drop one of these pins behind the slip table where I would never ever be able to get it back. So, safety first. Ha ha! The final big technical important fit is, will the motor actually fit onto the new mount? Now, to find that out, we'll have to take the motor off of the old mount. And before I do that, I want to carefully mark on the wall where the center line is. I want to make sure that this motor gets mounted at the exact same height from the bottom of the slip tank as it is currently sitting. So, thank God for lasers. Once I got the wall marked so I knew where the motor was going to be when we stuck it back on, it was time to pull the motor off of the old corroded mount. Uh, and this ended up being a little more complicated than I expected. Oh man, okay. I got the interior motor mount off of that thing. As you can see, the motor is lying exhausted over here. You know how you sometimes get into a project and you realize, wow, this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was. This is one of those moments, but so far things are going well and check out this. Are you ready for the big relief of the day? Here we go. Oh, perfect fit. Look at that. This is what relief looks like. All right, we got it on there. I still have to ground it. 
Um, and you know what? It's almost five o'clock. Saturday's gone. Weekend is half gone. <sighs> it happens. Anyway, I still do have to make slip, but obviously I'm not going to be making slip until this is done. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up early. I'm going to go for a nice run. I'm going to eat some donuts. And then we're going to put this thing together, hang it on a wall, and we're going to make some slip. It's Sunday. Oh, and the sun is out, as you can see. Um, yeah, so had a great run this morning. Uh, I am chock full of donuts and orange juice and a delicious chai tea. It's time to get this thing on the wall because I have got to make slip today. Um, full disclosure, I did have a bit of an issue. I, I bought the wrong bolts. These, uh, these nuts are supposed to sit inside of here um, and they don't um, because they're just the wrong size. So they were getting in the way of this sliding in. So I had to cut some notches in that, which I was kind of bummed about, but perfection is the enemy of ever finishing anything. So I notched them and it's fine. This thing will work great, hopefully for many years. Um, and I will think of my mistake every time I look at these notches. <sighs> Let's get it on the wall. Using those markers that I'd put up with the laser, I marked my center line and the height that I want to mount these two boxes. And I want to note that this is a plywood wall that has absolutely no electrical or anything else behind it. So I don't have to worry and I can put really strong anchors on it without the thought of driving a screw into a power line. So if you're trying this at home, be careful. I'm also using my level to make sure that I keep this completely perfectly true because it's the propeller shaft and I want it to go perfectly up and down. I had to reposition the, the main start and stop button for the mixer and I also had to rehang my slip timer. Uh, and here you're gonna see me make the classic measure twice, cut once mistake. I measured the anchor points, I put it up there. I should have measured it a second time because I'm off by one inch. Ah! So we have to bump that screw over, there we go. And now we're good to go. Okay, I got it plugged in, I got the new wiring in, and as you can see, I've got the new timer correctly attached to the wall. Uh, the last step is we're gonna turn this thing on and see if it works. Um, yeah, I'm excited and scared at the same time. You guys, it's amazing. Look at this. It runs much quieter than it did before because it's anchored firmly to the wall and not kind of rattling around and reverberating on the slip table itself. Ah, it is just so great. Okay, this is the moment where I realize I kind of forgot to film me using this new slip motor mount. Like I didn't show me taking it off the wall and putting it in the new position. That's what happens when you burn up a weekend and your brain is completely fried. So anyway, I'm going to dash into the studio right now, record me using it, like, you know, moving around, and then we'll hop back into the stuff I actually did shoot that weekend. So here it is, the motor mount and the upright position. It is up here to keep it away from the damp slip environment so it won't corrode while I'm not using it. And when it's time to go, you simply roll back the plastic and pull the pins. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we got the pins with the little safety lanyards. Look at that. I would have dropped these into the slip within a matter of minutes of using this motor mount. When slip casting is done for the day, you simply go back to those pins, pull them out, and move the slip mixer to the upright and locked position. This will keep it, again, away from the moist slip table, which we then cover with its security blanket of plastic, keeping that slip nice and damp. So there you have it, the new slip motor mixing mount. Uh, could not be happier with the end result. Um, and projects like this, studio improvement projects, they're always things like I've got a whole bunch of them in my head that I wanna do. And because we're just so dang busy in the studio, they usually get put off right until we absolutely have to tackle it, which is the case with this. I mean, so much corrosion was coming off of the old mount. I finally just had to do it. And I had to get it done by right now because I couldn't interfere with the next batch of slip that I had to mix. So I am going to clean up this massive mess of tools that I have here and return the studio to a proper clay studio and mix up 150 pounds of slip to continue casting the little Emmy mugs. Hope you enjoyed this Studio Improvements Tiki Technical Tuesday and I will see you 
next episode.